Hi everyone, what's up? It's Joshua here from Alternative Brewing, and today we've got a head-to-head -head of the Fellow Prismo versus the Joe Presso. Both are promoted as espresso attachments for the AeroPress coffee maker. So each one will replace the standard AeroPress filter cap with its many holes and the paper filter in order for you to brew something that's more like an espresso and uses far less water to coffee in the ratio. Now, this achieves a more concentrated coffee shot that's akin to the strength of espresso brewing. I'm not gonna be comparing these to an actual espresso shot as they both aren't capable of replicating what a machine can do, but we will be taking a look at the pros and cons that come with each, as well as tasting the quality of the espresso-like quantity of coffee they both can produce. And speaking about likeness, right now I need you to smash that like button as it does help with the YouTube algorithm and we'd really appreciate it. So with that out of the way, let's get straight back to the video. Now, a side-by-side -side comparison, and it appears that they have very similar design elements. The Prismo, however, comes apart in two components, with the stainless steel fine mesh filter fitted with a seal, and the use of the metal filter is what allows you to use a finer grind. And this sits within the Prismo attachment, and then you twist this onto the AeroPress. With the use of that silicon one-way valve built into the attachment, you build pressure and then direct the brew through that one hole at the bottom. And with only one exit point is what creates more pressure than normal on your AeroPress brew. The Joe Presso on the other hand, this comes apart in four pieces, with the outer attachment ring housing a 51 millimeter stainless steel pressurized filter basket. Now, these baskets are very common in home coffee espresso machines that rely on the basket to create much of the pressure needed for espresso brewing. The coffee will flow through many laser etched holes inside the basket, but then be constricted to only one hole within a very short distance. And this increases the overall pressure capabilities to almost choking point. And it's the size and the precision of the holes that allows you to use almost espresso ground coffee with the Joe Presso. Now on top of the basket is where you place your silicon seal, and then you use a water dispersion screen so you're not pouring water directly onto that bed of coffee. Now they both attach really easy to the AeroPress, although the Prismo you will be able to brew using the original and the inverted style. And this opens up a few more doors for adding extra coffee to your dose or longer steeping brews as the coffee is added in like a normal AeroPress brew. And the grind you would use with the Prismo is a medium to fine grind. Although if you grind too fine, you will start to see those grounds appear in your coffee. Although you can avoid this altogether by adding an additional regular AeroPress press paper filter on top of the metal Prismo one prior to adding your coffee. It does kind of miss the point of a reusable sustainable filter, but I have known this method to improve the overall results with the Prismo. And there's one more thing you are able to do with the Prismo that's not quite as easy with the Joe Presso, and that is stirring the coffee prior to plunging. So once you've added your water in, it suggests a vigorous stir for 20 seconds for the best results. The Joe Presso, on the other hand, acts more like a traditional espresso basket, where it's prepared separately from the brewer and then attached to the AeroPress later on. So you're only ever gonna be able to brew with the Joe Presso in the original style. Now, I've been able to get up to 18 grams of ground coffee in this filter basket, and then after that, it does overflow over the sides. So this could be a little bit limiting, but I do know they're bringing out larger filter baskets soon. And the grind size is much finer than a regular AeroPress grind, perhaps similar to a mocha pot grind and also finer again than what's capable on the Prismo. You'll want to tamp the coffee lightly in the basket and this works well to increase the resulting pressure and then the general evenness of extraction as well. And with the seal on, the dispersion screen in place and then attached to the AeroPress, you add your water in gently over the dispersion screen to start your pre-infusion. Now with both of them in the original brewing style, I've placed 18 grams of ground coffee in each within their respective grinds plus 60 grams of boiling water for both, aiming for a 40 to 45 gram shot out. I've stirred with the Prismo and then I've let them both sit for pre-infusion for 20 seconds. Now it's time to add the plunger and press. Both the Prismo and the Joe Presso release the pressure quite quickly as soon as I place the plunger on. And the stream from the Prismo though is a little bit thicker and it seems easier to press compared to the Joe Presso, which feels like there is a more consistent pressure throughout the entire press, whilst the Prismo gets easier and easier the further you get down. A crema begins on the Joe Presso quite early and then more and more appears throughout the shot, 
whilst the Prismos foamy crema happens right at that last moment of pressing if you're lucky, and then it's not all that thick and doesn't last all that long. But both brews were successful as I was able to achieve my target weight out in a good time. But the final test for the espresso brewing is the taste test, which is the only true analysis of whether your brew method has worked out or not with the Joe Presso and the Prismo. Cheers. So I guess you would say they're maybe just a little bit under extracted. They're certainly not at their full potential of what the coffee can be. There is still a little bit of crema left on the Joe Presso, whereas the Prismo is quite flat now. And there's definitely more gleam and richness to the Joe Presso shot. And perhaps that's evidence of more oils extracted in the shot under pressure. Yeah, and you can certainly taste that. It has more body and it has more heaviness in the shot. Whereas the Prismo coffee, although thinner in body and viscosity, it is much sweeter. And I think if I was gonna drink this as a short black as it is, the Prismo would definitely be my choice in this scenario. Whereas this would be my absolute choice if I was gonna add it to a longer latte or a cappuccino, and even dilute this down a little bit more with some hot water for an Americano. That would be really nice. But they're both quite reasonable. However, I wouldn't say they brewed the same sort of coffee. Though there was one more thing I had planned to do, and it's certainly far away from an actual experiment, though I wanted to attach a pressure valve to the AeroPress just to see if it could register any pressure whatsoever during brewing, so I went and did that. Now, I wouldn't go and recommend you do this at home because it does ruin a perfectly good AeroPress otherwise. Brewing these side by side, I had them set up with the same dose, grind, and water, both with a finer than normal ground coffee in them to hopefully help build more pressure than the regular pressure I was able to achieve, as the results were more interesting than the possibility of it actually being a regular mod. The Prismo popped pretty early still, and I was able to achieve one bar of pressure though, so brewing the entire coffee out, I was pretty happy with that. The Joe Presso choked up completely, and it didn't even brew initially. With a little hard work and elbow grease, I was able to get that pressure easily above one bar, and I brewed much the same as before, with obviously a little extra pressure and a longer brew time, and I did taste the results, though they were much the same as before. What I do love about the Prismo is the ability to add more than the usual amount of coffee to the AeroPress, and then still brew something of an espresso strength, even from 50 grams of ground coffee to 150 grams of water for a big super concentrated brew that I would then split into a few separate cups. Now, it doesn't mean I couldn't do that without the Prismo either, and that's part of the reason why I love the AeroPress so much, but it does make it a lot easier in that original style, allowing no drips prior to pressing. And also the shape of the Prismo allows you to press straight into a shot glass or other containers that might have a small opening due to its design. What I love about the Joe Presso mainly is the overall likeness to espresso brewing that it resembles. With the espresso basket, the puck prep and the tamping, along with the crema that it achieves, it's pretty amazing. And the possibility of larger filter baskets for bigger espresso brews, or even a non-pressurized basket for something even closer to espresso coffee is something I'm gonna keep on my radar. So in summary, the Fellow Prismo has a long-standing reputation as being a good alternative to a regular AeroPress brew, offering something like espresso in nature. But since testing and tasting the Joe Presso brews, it has stepped up and raised the bar a little bit more for me, bringing with it guaranteed crema, richer shots, and then something again that's far more like espresso than what the Prismo does achieve. So if you have any questions on either the Joe Presso or the Fellow Prismo, throw them in the comment section down below and we'll get straight back to you. Don't forget to hit that little bell icon on your screen and then that way you stay notified when we bring out new videos just like this every week. Thanks for watching this video. We'll see you next time.